let me give you three th key things to focus on for the Merchant of Venice. One key thing is on that relationship between Shylock and his Christian adversaries, right? There's a bargain made, right? The pound of flesh bargain that everyone knows about, whether you've you know seen the play, read the play or not. Think about that dynamic. Think about who's alienating who, whose response is justified. Are they both justified? It's what you'd call kind of a zero sum game, right? Where there's no real winners out of that relationship. Think about why that is. Think about whether Shylock is a victim or a villain. That's an interesting paragraph to consider, especially in relation to the question that you see on screen about human behavior, motivations, lives, and culture. The second consideration is how women play into it, the role of women, gender stereotypes, how Portia assumes a male persona to actually invert the power hierarchy within this patriarchal culture and how it's actually rather ironic that she was like an, a, a marginalized individual perhaps you know because of her because of her gender because of her sex she's marginalized just like Shylock and yet she shows no empathy for him once she assumes that position of power it's like the power gets to her head straight away this is just one take you could consider that maybe you disagree with what I just said but it's something to consider and the third thing that I mentioned is to talk about the, why everyone in the society, in, in the Merchant of Venice, why is everyone discontent? Why is everyone unfulfilled? Why is everyone unhappy? Antonio even says at the beginning, I know not why I am so sad, right? There, it's a divisive culture and maybe it's a culture, uh, there is a culture here that is obsessed with the wrong things, the wrong values. They're not about tolerance. They're not about community and, and, and they're also not even about individuality. It's all about groupthink. It's all about, hey, if you're not aligned with my worldviews, then we'll alienate you. That's a divisive culture. And as I said, it's like a zero-sum game. There's no winners in that, right? You're divisive. You're buying into ideology. You're not showing mercy or forgiveness. There's not a lot of mercy going on in this play. And when you have a culture that doesn't show mercy, forgiveness, acceptance, tolerance, what you end up with is you end up with a general kind of cultural malice right? Uh, malaise. I think I'm saying that word incorrectly. But basically, there's this feeling, there's this lack of fulfillment. Everyone's just obsessed with money. They, they, they're kind of disorientated. They, they've lost their way. They're no longer focused on the right values about family, forgiveness, acceptance. The virtue of this society seems to have been stripped away. And now everyone is unhappy and they don't know why. It's a lack of self-awareness. So there are three powerful things to think about when you're looking at the Merchant of Venice.